Last week I was driving and I saw this cloud literally on the road. So I pulled over, took my drone out and flew through it. And it made me wonder what are clouds made of and how are they so massive and able to stay afloat in the air? And more importantly, what if I was to create a cloud in my backyard? Now before doing the cloud in my backyard, I realized I needed to find out what clouds are made of. So obviously they're made up of tiny water droplets, but how do they get there? Well, they get so hot they evaporate and float up in the air. So when they meet up in the atmosphere and reach the cold air, they turn again into tiny water droplets and attach to other tiny particles like dust, air pollution, and pollen until they become too heavy to float, turning again into water. This made me realize that making a cloud in my backyard won't be that hard. But before we make a mess in the backyard, let's make a smaller cloud that you can make at home. All you need is boiling water, some food coloring if you want, tiny particles that the water can join to, we're just gonna use some hairspray for that, and cold air to make vapor turn into tiny droplets of water. See, as the heat rises, the water particles from the boiling water is gonna wanna rise. It's gonna push up all that water vapor that is now visible because of the particles in the air that can be seen from the hairspray, the cool air is gonna wanna sink down. The hot air is gonna wanna push up. The ice is gonna cause it to condense. And then we're gonna release the cloud. It's gonna be really cool. As we can see, it's just like a cloud in the sky. That is awesome. But how do I make a bigger cloud? I can make a cloud just by taking some liquid nitrogen and adding some hot water. It's gonna instantly vaporize and turn into a cloud because of the difference in temperature. Ready, watch this. But that's not the type of cloud I'm looking for. I'm looking for a massive cloud, the type of cloud I flew my drone through. And for that, we're gonna need an explosion. Now, if you're familiar with liquid nitrogen a little bit, you know it can be used to make giant clouds, even eat some popcorn, <coughs> or put it in your yarmulke. I use it in my summer camp, I use it in all my shows, and I definitely don't have to tell you that this is dangerous, right? If you trap that gas, that becomes powerful. And you can do a lot of cool experiments, like we've done. Should we show them? Yeah. Whoa! Oh, wow, that was amazing! Or what about the garbage can shooting all the way up? Whoa! Or what about the massive cloud with the foam? Here we go! Whoa! Oh! And we need to think about all that before we mess around with liquid nitrogen. Got it? If you think about how dangerous liquid nitrogen is, it's quite funny when you realize that most of the air we breathe is actually nitrogen, around 70% of it, which means that our backyard cloud won't need hairspray or anything like that to help the boiling water form into a cloud. Even better, it's always gonna be negative 320 degrees, so we're not gonna need ice. Watch what happens when I mix the boiling water with liquid nitrogen. It turns into an instant cloud. And lastly, to make sure our cloud lasts as long as possible, we're gonna shower it with more droplets of water with a hose. Now for the moment of truth. Let's make a cloud in my backyard. Mission accomplished. After seeing a real cloud and flying through it with my drone, I was able to create one right here in my backyard. Thanks for watching, and remember, science is all around us, sometimes even right in your own backyard. Look at the cloud. Wow. Look at that. That is it. If you liked today's video, if you want to see more incredible science, like and subscribe, check out my playlist, and I'll see you in the next one.